Good morning. Welcome to Worship First United Methodist Church here in Millington, Tennessee. I'm the pastor, Ronnie Peck, and if you're joining us online, which of course you are right now, we want to say a very special thank you for joining us for our worship today, the first Sunday of the new year, and uh, we can only hope and pray that everything about this year is going to be better than it was for 2020. Uh, once again, of course, we are coming to you via Facebook, uh, our YouTube channel, and uh, we have course have ceased church activities for a while until these spikes and these COVID cases uh, began to go down hopefully with the new vaccine rolling out that uh, we're going to get that figured out and and maybe it will uh, have a positive effect. I want to add my appreciation to uh, both Robbie and Barbara Riley for being here and adding the technical support today my wife Pam who is my emotional and spiritual support, and thank you for being with us as well. I want to offer my personal thanks to Miss Debbie Clifton, our children's minister, last week, who uh, filled in for me while Pam and I were away. Um, Debbie's message was very thought-provoking, and I felt uh, spot on in addressing how many of us felt about 2020, the effects it had on us personally, emotionally, spiritually, and, and in so many uh, ways. A few things to go over in our announcements. One of the first ones that uh, I make you aware of, uh, Miss Mary Mooney. Uh, we want to offer her our sincerest congratulations on her retirement. She has been in our uh, financial office here at the church for a number of years and I feel like has done an exceptional job. I could always count on Mary keeping myself and the whole church apprised of everything that was happening financially in the church, knowing where every nickel was, making sure that everything was paid, making sure that our church remained solid financially. She gave her heart and soul to it for so many years and we just want to say thank you and, and, uh, and in appreciation for her service to Millington First United Methodist Church. She's a very, very special lady, a good friend to me personally. I love her to death and Mary, we thank you so much for your service and wish you well in what God has planned for you in this next chapter of your life. On the other side of that, uh, we have hired Jade Lowry to come in and uh, work as our uh, business uh, manager for the church. She takes over for Miss Mary. She's been training under Miss Mary now for uh, at least a month and off and on for the last several months. Uh, she has extensive financial credentials. We're very excited about her coming on. She's excited not only to be able to work for her church, but to serve her Lord in this capacity. And so she brings a lot of energy and passion to this uh, position and I know that we're going to be in very capable hands with the hiring of Jade Lowry. So good news for our church and some of our staff here at the church. <clears throat> in other announcements, the memorial service for Melinda Hall are uh, this Thursday, uh, January the 7th. It's going to be at the Millington Chapel and the visitation will be at 2 p.m. and Melinda's memorial service will be at 3 p.m. at the Millington Chapel. Also I invite you to join me each week in the middle of the week on Wednesday at noon for our weekly faith uh, lift. I know that some people have enjoyed that and enjoy bringing that to you. And finally Remember this morning is the first Sunday in January and as, each, as we do each first Sunday of the month, we will be celebrating communion. So if you need a minute to uh, go get your communion elements, you may do that. We'll have communion uh, virtually at the conclusion of today's sermon. That's all I have right now in the way of announcements. Uh, if you'll bow your heads with me, we'll go to God in prayer. O oh God, give us wisdom from your truths. Fill us with a desire to faithfully follow after you more than anything else. And thank you that you are far greater than whatever we may face. Thank you that your presence goes with us 
and that your joy is never dependent on circumstances, but it is our true and lasting strength. We ask for your peace to lead us and for your grace and goodness to cover our lives this day. Let your spirit and power breathe in us and through us each day, fresh and new. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, one of the joys that we uh, that I'd like to lift up to you is that Pam and I had an opportunity to get away for a few days last week, and uh, it was very relaxing. We didn't do a whole lot. Uh, we were over in a, another state in Missouri, just sort of relaxing and having a, a good time. And so, again, my appreciation to Debbie Clifton, uh, who filled in for me, want to uh, alert us, of course, again, as we said a minute ago, Melinda Hall's memorial service coming up this Thursday at uh, visitation 2 p.m. at the Millington Chapel service at 3 p.m. We also need to keep uh, Mr. Jim Stanford in our prayers over the recent loss of his wife, uh, Miss Anita. You know, Anita was just a, a real balm of grace, if you will, uh, to so many, particularly in heading up the church's prayer shawl ministry. Uh, she dedicated her life to that, if you will, and I don't know how many prayer shawls she ended up making personally, but there was always enough to go around. And she enlisted the help of many of you out there to to make those and have those available. Whenever she heard of a need, then uh, she took it on as a personal mission to make sure that people were surrounded with love and care. Each of those prayer shawls that were given out to anyone who had a need were prayed over so that when they put those prayer shawls around their shoulders or in their lap or however they chose to use them, then they knew that those prayer shawls had been uh, paid over, uh, prayed over. Uh, Anita gushed with pride uh, on being able to serve her church in this way, and we thank her uh, for that, and we will miss that. But I know that in this church there will be people who will step up and carry that on and move that ministry forward. So we thank her, and we remember her devotion to that ministry, to the church and to her Lord. We want to remember, of course, Pam Smith, uh, and there are a number of other people. Uh, you know, when you start mentioning names, you think about those names that later on you didn't mention, but I want to encourage you each week to look at that prayer list that we uh, issue at the beginning of each week. Uh, you've been very faithful to send in your prayer requests, and I know many of you, including myself, use that as part of the morning devotional. Uh, when you're doing your devotional, you look at that prayer list, and you can pray for people by name, which I think really is very important. So I want you to remember our family, too. There are a number of issues that we have mentioned in the past. Pam's nephew, Stan Langley, will be going through another uh, cancer surgery coming up very soon. Pam's daughter, Leslie, our grandchildren, uh, I think they made it pretty well uh, through this holiday. My oldest son, Tony, went through uh, uh, COVID issues in the last couple of weeks. I think he's uh, gotten past that now, and uh, I think that uh, he'll be able to return to work very soon and is seemingly getting out from under the effects of the COVID virus. So a number of things to, to remember as we prepare now to go to God in prayer. Father, thank you for your great love and blessing over our lives. <clears throat> thank you that your favor has no end, but it lasts for our entire lifetime. Forgive us for sometimes forgetting that you are intimately acquainted with all of our ways, that you know what concerns us, and you cover us with a, a shield. We ask you, we ask that we would walk in your blessing and goodness today. That your face would shine on us 
that you would open the right doors for our lives and for our loved ones, that you would close the wrong doors and protect us from those we need to walk away from. Establish the work of our hands and, and bring to fulfillment all that you have given us to do in these days. We pray that you would make our way purposeful and our footsteps firm out of your goodness and love. Give us a heart of wisdom to hear your voice and make us strong by your huge favor and grace. And we pray all of these things in the name of Jesus who taught us all to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I apologize on the front end. Uh, I think I was out in the cold and wind a little bit too much last week, and I'm dealing with a little bit of a head cold, and I'm, I'm satisfied that's all it is, but uh, uh, hopefully it's not going to be too distracting for us this morning. I want to share with you a passage of scripture that comes from the Old Testament prophet Jeremiah in the 31st chapter I've chosen verses 10 through 14. Jeremiah 31, 10 through 14. Hear the word of the Lord. <coughs> in fact, that's how he starts out. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him, will keep him as a shepherd and a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from the hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion. They shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old men shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with bounty, says the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I am glad to be back with you today. Uh, I've missed you, and we had some great services through the holiday uh, weeks, I believe, and we want to thank you for joining us for those as well. But I uh, appreciated the Sunday off last week, and uh, we had a very relaxing time, Pam and I. Uh, again, thank you to uh, Debbie Clifton, our children's minister, who came and filled in while we were away. Both Pam and I sat with you last week and listened as uh, Debbie brought that sermon, and I found it very engaging and very thought-provoking, not only on a personal level, but I thought that it was very relevant for what we have experienced over the last several months as we moved further into that COVID event. You know, each morning we have our routines. Uh, most people get up and they do pretty much the same thing each morning. I get up, I make the coffee, go in, turn on the television, Pam and I watch CBS this morning. Uh, it's, a, it's a new show in the morning. A lot of people watch the NBC Today show, and there's uh, others that are on. We've chosen to watch CBS this morning. Gail King, uh, Anthony Mason, Tony DeCoppel, we just enjoy watching. Well, last Thursday, CBS this morning ran a story that featured uh, the points of view from several different religious leaders from several different faith backgrounds. For instance, there was a Muslim Imam, uh, there was a Roman Catholic priest author, there was a Protestant pastor, uh, a Jewish rabbi, a Buddhist, and a Hindu, uh, a Hindu teacher. And, and you know, as I listened to them, 
talk about what we had gone through, what we can expect in the in the upcoming months and, and hopefully the upcoming year. <coughs> Excuse me. I found it interesting that the central message that all of them shared, and, the, and they were interviewed separately. They weren't part of a panel. They just went out and, and found them in their own setting. And, and they each sort of uh, resonated the same message, and that was a message of hope for the coming year. Uh, but even, uh, you know, I, I found that interesting, that all of them sort of came down to the same thing. And it was hope in God, actually, which I found very encouraging. But even the Buddhist acknowledged that we are all connected. We're, we are a connected society, if you will. And seeing each other as fellow human beings with human needs should guide the way we see each other and the way that we interact with each other. And I was encouraged when the message of empathy and commonality really came through in what really all of these religious leaders were, were saying. It's been interesting to me that we've, we've had to see people for what they are, for what we are. Because we're all on a human mission, if you will, to make it from Monday to Tuesday and do that as intact as we possibly can. And that would be intact emotionally, intact financially, intact spiritually. And this is where the, the seeds of, of commonality are, are sown. This is how we can begin to see how we're not as different as perhaps we have believed in the past. But we all, as human beings, share common goals. And I believe this is especially true when we see that the person in the affluent neighborhood just died of of COVID, of a COVID-related illness. But the person who delivers our mail also just died of COVID-related issues. We see the 90-plus-year-old that just came out of the hospital after having been on a respirator for two months. But then on the other side of that, we see the healthy, strong athlete who works out every day and has paid particular attention to their health. We see them planning a memorial service for that person. It just sometimes doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But this year has really shown us that sometimes we're dependent on forces that are beyond our control, that we don't really have any control over. The person who believed that they had a job which they were going to wake up and go to every day is now suddenly having to rethink what they'll be doing tomorrow. And they're worried about being laid off. There are people who felt like that. They were secure enough financially that they had a good steady stream of income that are now waiting for some sort of stimulus assistance to come so that they can either pay rent, pay a mortgage, or put food on the table. And then when it seems they could go back to work, that their place of business has opened back up, their job is now waiting for them, and as they prepare to go back into the workplace, all of a sudden they're diagnosed and test positive for COVID. Now got to be out a little longer. As Debbie pointed out last week, it seems that 2020 had done its best to find new ways to just sort of slap us in the face time and again. How are we to look at this? What do we need to learn from this? And what I would say to us is that we need to learn something. The worst thing 
2020 can do to us is to put us in a mindset of just having gotten through it. 2021 can be better if we choose to make it better. Last Thursday, Rabbi Rick Jacobs said, <clears throat> I would hope that as we are finishing 2020, that we enter 21 with a feeling that each of us is responsible for shaping 21 for being a year of healing, a year of hope, a year of kindness, that we come together with a sense of building a more compassionate and caring world. The Reverend Jackie Lewis said, I hope that all of the wounds of this year are seen as a place where strength will grow. You know, the reason I chose this passage this morning from Jeremiah 31 is because I believe that there are some striking parallels between the people of Israel and what they were experiencing and kind of what we have gone through. For one, the people mentioned in Jeremiah 31 are actually from the northern kingdom, which is Israel. The southern kingdom is Judah. Uh, and most of the time, when we think of biblical prophecies, and we read those prophecies and we're trying to attach it to particular people, we attach it to the people of Judah because they have this really strong Davidic connection. And we just think about them much. And so the people in the northern kingdom of Israel get a whole lot less press, if you will. Another reason Israel might not get as much press is because literally they fell off of the divine wagon far sooner than the people of Judah did. The people of Israel have adopted the customs of their neighbors. They've adopted many of their gods and started worshiping gods other than the, the true and the living God that brought them out of captivity and made them a people. They've gone about their lives for a very long time living apart from the influence of God. And because of their proximity to other nations, well, truly, they, they just got picked on a lot. They were always in danger of some sort of invasion from the north or from the east or the west, from hostile nations. But the interesting thing is, when we read here in Jeremiah, we see a promise, a promise of hope, because we realize that God has not forgotten and, and says so here in this passage from Jeremiah. I believe God is essentially saying that, all right, you've experienced the worst in life. And rather than just hoping it all goes away, why don't you use it as a foundation to reshape a new future? A future where once again God is at the core of everything that they do. Wouldn't it be a better world if we took the same advice that we're getting from Jeremiah 31 today? And 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 rather than just saying, whew, boy, tell you what, I'm glad that 2020 is behind us, you know? Put that thing in our in our rear view. Well, but who is it? Well, when we say that, we need to ask ourselves, what have we learned from that experience? How are the events of 2020 going to make 21 better for us and everybody else? One of the biblical principles that Jesus emphasized 
when he first began to minister in earnest was, you can say this with me, you know what it is, repent and believe the gospel. Repent for the kingdom of God is near. The way some people in Jesus' day heard that statement when Jesus said it, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, was like, well, great. Yeah, I, I hope things will get better. But when they heard that, and even though they may have said that to themselves, they just went about their lives and their routines just like they always had and nothing changed. But at the core of Jesus' message was the word repent. So let's, let's take a look at that and, and, and what that says. I think that's a strong message for us this morning as well. The message of repentance. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You see the Greek word is metanoia. And uh, a lot of people want to make this word metanoia uh, only have one meaning. And, and the meaning that they most often attach to repent, metanoia, is get right with God. Well, you know, honestly, it does have that component to it. it. It does, and I think we need to take that seriously. But the word metanoia is actually two words that are joined together, meta and noia. <clears throat> the first part, meta, is, is a word that means change the way you act or change the way you do things. I mean, for Jesus, it could be something as radical as changing the whole culture, changing the way you go about your life, the way that you worship God. And then comes the noia, which addresses the moral part of repentance. <clears throat> and I think the implication here is pretty explicit. Seek to become more godly and allow those principles to change, to guide the change necessary to fulfill God's vision for humanity. Now I'm going to say that again to you. The implication of the word repentance to me is this, to seek to become more godly and to allow those principles to guide the change necessary to fulfill God's vision for humanity. As you can see, repentance or metanoia goes a lot further than just get saved and go to heaven. I believe it means repent, change, and lead the world to heaven. Could this be the change God wants to see in 2021? I believe it could be that God is saying to you and to me and the church and all of society, you've walked through the worst. Now begin to walk up the hill and help those who are having trouble getting their footing also get up the hill. I believe this is at the heart of the message that we read from the prophet Jeremiah. This is how God can once again be our deliverer. By becoming the reason we need to repent and change. By being the reason we want to repent and change. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This time let us prepare our hearts to receive the Lord's Supper. I would begin at the great thanksgiving. <clears throat> the Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Say it as you know it. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you. And blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, he gave birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death. And then made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, and when he blessed it and gave thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat, and as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup, and when he blessed it and gave thanks, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Hey, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Take this, drink it, and as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Say it as you know it. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. So pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts given to us this day. These gifts of bread, of wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the whole world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. And by your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ and the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ and the blessed cup of salvation. Well, again, I want to thank you today for joining us, joining us for this first service of the new year 2021. We hope that God has been a blessing to you. If uh, you found our service online, not a regular attender, we want to say thank you for joining us here this day. And hopefully you've heard something, a message that God has brought to you that spoke to you on a deep and personal level. I want to remind you that this Thursday is Melinda Hall's memorial service at the Millington Chapel. The uh, visitation will be at 2 p.m. and the service will be at 3 p.m. So with that, hear this benediction. Now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Thanks be to God.